McDonald's, Starbucks, Kenny Rogers, Wendy's, just to name a few. Every Malaysian should have at least patronized these shops once in their lifetime. We all know the success of McDonald's came from Ray Kroc, and we also know Howard Schultz bought Starbucks from the original founders and transformed it into the Starbucks we know today in Malaysia. But have you ever wondered who brought in these retail outlets to the Malaysian market? It is none other than Vincent Tan Chi Yong, the man who introduced several other well-known F&B franchises in Malaysia. While he is super rich now, did you know that he equipped with only a Form 5 education and the son of a lorry driver from Johor? And that did not stop him from becoming the founder of multi-industry conglomerate Bajaya Corporation Group. Born in 1952, he started his career as a bank clerk when he was 17 years old. He later went on to become the youngest agency manager for AIA Insurance at a tender age of 21. On one particular day, he picked up a Time magazine that could change his life and came across the burger article entitled Hamburger Empire. Fascinated by McDonald's story and foresaw McDonald's potential in Malaysia, he started to write letters to McDonald's headquarters to obtain a franchise license. And of course, they rejected his application letter. Unlike any quitter, he persisted in writing to McDonald's headquarters every week for 7 years. When they launched McDonald's in Singapore in 1981, he was the only Malaysian to be invited to the grand opening and later gave them a tour around Kuala Lumpur upon their request. Eventually, McDonald's decided to pick Tan as their partner over other large conglomerates because of his perseverance that he has dedicated to them over the years. Tan put in 250,000 ringgit, giving him 51% of the stake. He was only 28 years old at that time. The first outlet was opened in Jalan Bukit Bintang, which is still operational until today. As a devoted Buddhist, Tan's mom was upset with Tan for bringing in McDonald's to Malaysia and asked how could he sell beef. Since then, he stopped eating beef and later on became a vegetarian. Today, there are about 278 McDonald's restaurants operating throughout Malaysia and it's constantly growing. His first big break did not satisfy his appetite to be a big shot, so he went on to expand his business. In 1984, Tan acquired a major controlling stake in a steel company and transformed it into Bajaya Corporation Bahad, a diversified conglomerate in Malaysia listed on Bursa, Malaysia. Tan's second big break came in 1985 when he secured a 70% of Spot's total lottery from the then government, Dr. Mahathir. During that time, the government owned Spot's total was not doing so well and the annual profit was only 500,000 ringgit. Grabbing this opportunity, Tan offered a 28 million ringgit to Mahathir to acquire Spot's total and then privatized it. People were confused on why would he use a whopping 28 million ringgit to acquire a non-profitable company that had only 500,000 ringgit annual profit. However, under his brilliant leadership, he proved them wrong by restructuring Spot's total and its annual profit was up to 100 million ringgit in just 4 years. Vincent Tan's gaming business just got bigger. Entering the 1990s, he was already a wealthy and influential person in Malaysia. In 1991, he became Malaysia's youngest country below the age of 40. At the same time, Bajaya were able to acquire a number of Malaysian real estates and expand its leisure activities. By the mid-1990s, Bajaya had rose as a strong player in Malaysia. Only 150 subsidiaries in various industries such as food and beverage, hotel and resort vacation, telecommunication and media, property development, lotteries and online gaming and etc. Tan's journey may seem smooth so far, but he soon encountered the most critical moment in his life. It was the 1997 Asian financial crisis. He used to own Prudential and DG, but had to sell the stake he had in them in order to finance his property projects. That property is now the world's top 6 shopping mall named Bajaya Tam Square in Kuala Lumpur. Tan said it was his biggest regret for selling DG as DG was his best investment and it was worth more than 46 billion ringgit since. In order to compensate his loss, he started to purchase a large number of companies until the Bajaya Corporation Bahad be a diversified entity engaged in various core businesses which included airline, consumer products, financial services, model trading, football, and etc. I believe some of you may have used Friendster before. Founded in 2003, 
It was the first social networking website, but it was losing money for years, and eventually the owners decided to sell Friendster to cover its losses. At that time, Facebook wanted to buy Friendster's patents but were rejected because the offer price could not cover Friendster's losses. Tan was aware of that and made a smart move by buying Friendster for 38 million US dollar and then proposed to exchange Friendster's patent with Facebook share. Finally, Mark Zuckerberg agreed to a share exchange for the patents and Tan got his 3.5 million share, which is 1% share of Facebook stocks. Tan insisted on getting shares in Facebook because he felt the company would be big in the future. After Facebook went public with its initial public offering, the stake owned by Tan was worth 133 million US dollar. He then made it into the Forbes top 10 richest people list in Malaysia. Finally, branch of Vajaya started to appear overseas, including the Philippines, Thailand, Singapore, Hong Kong, England, Canada, US, and others. The founder is now the top 50 richest man in Malaysia with a net worth of approximately 3.1 billion ringgit in 2019. Today, the Bajaya Corporation Group founded by Tan and various other private businesses all bring in a fortune of over 32 billion ringgit worldwide. Tan Sri Vincent is more than just being a successful businessman. He is also a notable philanthropist. He has donated a lot and later set up a personal foundation, the Better Malaysia Foundation in 1997 to provide aid and relief for medical and charitable purposes. As for his children, he said that he will ensure they have sufficient comfort, but if they want wealth, they should earn it. Tan has a daughter named Chrysias Tan, who married to Nasimuddin, son of the founder of Nazar Group. He once told his kids that they were not allowed to play the game Farmview. If they want to farm, they can go to Bukit Tinggi. He will give them a real farm. Yes, that is how rich he is. By the way, he is the uncle of Hong Kong superstar Andy Lau's wife, Carol Chu. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and check out my other inspiring entrepreneurial success stories too. And as always, stay bright.